We're joined in the studio by the legend himself, Tom Bernard, who has now morphed his longtime career on radio to a podcast. That's a familiar story for you. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. We've run into each other, not infrequently, but this is the first time we ever sat down together formally. Yeah, right. that is true. And uh, well, are you... We're on his... Sorry. Oh. Sorry. You you were on his podcast that along with Mr. Years, Moeller. It was years ago. Oh, that was a, a long dozen? time yeah. ago. Yeah. yeah. It was about 11 years ago, I think. Yeah. I'd like to thank you, by the way. I sat down in my chair. Mm-hmm. It's the only chair in this uh, studio that says toilet on it. So, <laughs> that's Royce's oh, show notes. That's Royce's show notes. That's Royce's show notes. Royce's show notes. That's great. Royce's show notes. So I'm sitting yes. in the toilet seat. That's great. I have notes for the show. Toilet. Thank you. He's yes. got one topic. Right. Do you miss radio? Not at all. Mm. I do not miss radio. Really? Really? Actually, you and I talked about this 11 years ago when I started my family podcast. That, I mean, it depends on... Obviously, I'm not talking about Hubbard Broadcasting when I'm, I'm, what I'm about to say because they have money. Mm-hmm. Radio is just about over. Yeah. Well, AM certainly is, don't you FM think? is, too. Really? They're all deeply, deeply in debt, and they're not going to make it. There's really? no way. What I, my, my prediction, three years from now... This show will do rev share on radio. Really? This will be the leader. You'll do rev share. Start well, you did a syndicated show, so you know how that works. Mm-hmm. So my my opinion and again, like I said, the Hubbard family are they're billionaires. Everybody knows they're billionaires. I'm not revealing anything. They pay their bills. They pay their bills. You put together the other three biggest uh outfits in town, you got about twenty billion dollars in debt. Really? How are they going to make it past that? What's going to re- replace that vacuum right here? Podcast. You're no, on it will. They literally will take That's this big, show. Big money. One thing I will tell you about the Hubbards that I've always admired is I don't think it's a coincidence that they put against a, uh, put together a bunch of podcasts that are different times of the day because mm-hmm. basically they're constructing an entire twenty four hour. Mm-hmm. Radio show or yeah. radio yeah. Okay. station station yeah, yeah. so it's stations but show station whatever right I'm sitting in the toilet right. I'll say whatever I want <laughs> he's sitting in the crapper my opinion is this that um, well first of all there's no money in radio anymore anybody who wants to make any money is not going to get into radio because there's no money in it anymore what about satellite radio satellite radio. God, I've never been a fan. I got to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I try to listen to that Sirius XM. Mm-hmm. Are you pulling my? Mm-hmm. I, I have some friends that work there, obviously, and you know that's nice and all the rest of it. But no, I, I tell you, honest to God, like I said, I talked to you about this eleven years ago, and I, I tried to talk Cumulus into, into doing exactly what they did with you, but they were too busy taking the money and leaving. Mm-hmm. So, so wait a minute, wait, time out. Yeah. How come? Okay, everybody rips you off. Barrero's been ripping you off for oh 20 years. <laughs> Bernard comes in, he says, hey, we got to rip off Sushi Ray on the podcast. No. We got to go. And, uh, <laughs> Dan, I didn't say that. That's, Dan, that's I rookie. love you, but you, Dickens, you. Can we stick to the format Yes, here? okay. Oh, no, I like that. Yeah. Rail right back on. Well, Works I've for got me. some. I got some questions that I've always wondered. You're a North Minneapolis guy. Yes, sir. Born and raised. You were close mm-hmm. to your mom. Very close to my mother. And uh, do you, have, you have siblings. I have uh, four, well, three brothers now. My youngest brother died, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. uh, three brothers, two sisters. Mm-hmm. Indeed. If you had it to do over again, mm-hmm. would you do something else for a living before you started radio? No. Really? No. The well, second part of the question, are you the last to ever have accomplished that, going right to radio without having done anything else? I can't think of anybody else. Well, I was a dishwasher at Donaldson's. No, that doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count How many people all. heard of this? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I did a lot of bitching, so <laughs> yeah, a lot right, of people okay. heard me. Right. That, that's true. No, I, it just, I will tell you, the two things I want to get out of the way very, very quickly, because they're, they tend to be very emotional. I walked in this building the first time when I was 18 years old. Mm-hmm. That's 52 years ago. I mm-hmm. started here at 1500 KSTP. And I started as, I ran the Jesus tapes. You know, this is a true story, by the way. (laughs) Remember the Jesus tapes? They don't run those anymore. Probably still sitting over there. They used to run religious programs (laughs) on Sunday mornings, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So they always called them the Jesus tapes. Yeah. Right. So my first weekend, I'm a big shot. I am. I am. I had to take the bus over because I didn't start driving until I was 21. Right. So that was a thrill. And that was here. This was on university, correct? That yeah, was here. Yeah, it was here, in not this building. It was upstairs in the old 1500. Uh, they, yep. I think they redid that, like, what, in 1990? Uh, something like that. Yeah. Many yeah. times. Yeah. Yeah. Many times. So in any case, uh, so I, I walk in the building 
52 years ago, and I went, what the hell am I doing? I don't belong here. What is this? I mean, you look around. This is a very impressive building. For mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, it just is. So just to walk back in this building after all this time is pretty amazing. Because I have all these magnificent... Well, we were walking down the, the paneled hall down here. Mm -hmm. I said, man, I remember the first time I walked in here and I went... Man, they they got money. They got like paneling. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a very big you, deal, right? Tom, you told a story a few years ago back when you were still on the air. You had come over here for a visit, and uh, you remember our front uh, desk gal, Sharon. Sure. And Sharon was a uh, avant garde, should I say? A bit different. <laughs> um, and she said to you, and it cracked me up. You told the story. Uh, she said, Tom, your life has really turned out okay, hasn't it? <laughs> you really made something out of yourself. Well, and really. that was such a Sharon thing to say. <laughs> well, yeah, that's probably true. We really miss her. She that's was a lot of fun. <clears throat> can no, any, I understand. Can anyone duplicate what you've done? And I think you've already answered that. No. Yeah, radio's not anymore. Gonna, radio's gone. It's radio's going to be just, gone. It's going to be gone. I, I would say maybe three more years. If I owned a bunch of radio stations in smaller markets, I would come to you, I'd come to me, I'd come to all the people. You know, Phil and Judd are great, great people to deal with. And I would say, look, this is not syndication like you went through. This is a rev share. We want to use your content to make money, and we'll give you... Uh, they'll Next. probably want like you know thirty percent. They'll, they'll probably want sixty five percent, and you'll get thirty five percent. It'll cost them nothing. Mm -hmm. They just keep selling it in their market, and so everybody makes money because we can't afford to have twelve people working in. You know, like I, I worked in Grand Forks. I know it's hard to believe, but I got fired several times. Really, <laughs> really hard to believe. And then no one would hire me in Minneapolis, St. Paul, so I had to move to Grand Forks, North Dakota, which was fine. I didn't know you moved away. Oh, you didn't know that? I did not know I that did. about your career. Twice I moved away because both times I, nobody would hire me. I know it's really hard to believe that I could be unpleasant at times. Catman. <laughs> Catman. <laughs> Tom, I don't know if you know about Joe's deep-rooted negotiations, but he and Patrick years ago had to negotiate with the replay of... Uh, I'll, I'll tell Tom that story. <laughs> there you go. I Leave like it to that. A <laughs> I like that. We're doing Monday Night Sports Talk back in the day. Sure. And they came up with the idea of doing a, a Saturday sports talk. I remember that, too. And... Yep. Uh, I, I forget what happened. Well, you you were approached by were, station management. Yeah, the management said, would you guys mind if we gave you 50 bucks each to do what? To replay, to replay the show. To replay Monday Night Sports Talk. And I said, <laughs> Hold on. let me talk to my partner here. Yeah. <laughs> so Royce and I went out in the back and rolled around on the ground for a few minutes <laughs> and came back in and said, yes, we'll accept that. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, do you know it's twenty five hundred bucks a year? I mean, you know what the hell? <laughs> to what do, do you nothing. Want? <laughs> to do nothing. Well, exactly. I, I think we're, we've we've touched on something momentous here, and I want to I want to conclude it. That that career is is gone for young people. The career of a it guy is, yeah. uh, like in your yep. in your teens, deciding I'm going to go into radio. I like it. I want to be part of it. That's in your estimation. That's not going to happen anymore. No. Well, the one thing that still remains is, and you guys changed that a lot, and I wanted to thank all of you for that, by the way, um, because you and the Hubbard family having faith in you opened new doors for people. You know, yeah, I've been doing the podcast for 11, almost 12 years now, but I couldn't talk anybody into doing anything. I, mm -hmm. I went to, this is my favorite part of it. So Cumulus buys it. Um, is there anybody you hate? No. <laughs> no. Nobody. Kenny I hates all of us. You're sitting with three of them. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> but honest to God, uh, Cumulus buys the station like 11 years ago, I think, something like that, which is why I started the podcast, because I knew I'd never be able to work for them for a long term. Ended up being 10 years or whatever, 11 years almost. But um, I've... I set up an appointment with uh, the vice president. It was John Dickey, maybe the biggest jackass I've ever met in my life. <laughs> okay. It's out. It's out. Uh, no, it's been out for oh, okay. a long time. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm not really too good about lying, like being nice to people that I don't like. Is, just, that's okay. I Candace just can't okay. do it. I, I can't do it. I cannot be nice to someone I don't like. 
So uh, he said something to Moimo. He said, why don't you fly in on Thursday uh, in Atlanta? They were in, in Buckhead. And so, and I, by the way, I was always very uncomfortable. You live in Buckhead? That's yeah, that, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> that's right. Close, right. isn't it? I'm very close to <laughs> right. something that's not so complimentary. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you're doing a caller ID or you're doing a station ID in Buckhead yeah. right. every hour. Listen up, Buckhead. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the wealthiest suburb of Atlanta. Oh, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot of money there. Yeah. You ever been to Irv's, the oldest bar? Is it Ike's or, Ike's or Irv's? I can't remember. It's been there for 125 years. Never been there. Wow. It is unbelievable. So anyway, I fly in Atlanta. I get there. I stay at the, uh, some hotel overnight. And I get up in the morning. I go to my meeting. And I'm sitting out in the lobby. And um, this person comes out and goes, you know, this, I, I hate to tell you this, but uh, oh, no. John doesn't have time to meet with you. Oh, Jesus. I, said, I flew here from Minneapolis to Atlanta, stayed overnight. I've been sitting here for about an hour. Now you're telling me he doesn't have time to meet me at all? And I said, uh, I want you to do me a favor. I'm going to go and get in a taxi right now. And I can't tell you what I called him mm-hmm. because, you know, they're not right. editing. Yeah. Sure. But you tell, it starts with, I think, I think it starts with an M and ends with an F. All right. Or okay. there might be an F in the middle of it. F in the meat middle. Meatloaf. <laughs> you tell him he's a meatloaf. <laughs> meat float. <laughs> yeah, it's a meat float. Meat float. <laughs> That's what it was. You tell him that if I ever see him again, it ain't going to be pretty. Mm-hmm. You don't do this to people. It's the rudest thing that's ever happened to me. It's just unbelievable. Aside a uh, little sycophantness, your street creds already. You don't do that to Tom Bernard. Yeah, you've well, been yeah. a bit of an earner for him, you know? Well, I mean, that's the whole thing. I, yeah. I believe that, that yeah. you're... Well, we were the highest rated morning show in the nation. Yeah. The entire country, which, by the way, I never found out until they fired me. They never told me that. They never told me that. Oh, they never sent out, hey, way to go. No. Oh, Congrats God, no. to all and then reply no, on email. No, 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 no. Okay. There was none of that at all. <laughs> and I understand I've got an edge to me. I do. And I know that. And I, you know, some people get a little. Remind me, though, Tom, who owned uh, the station before Cumulus? Was it Disney? No, uh, Disney was two back. It was uh, Citadel. And Citadel had no interest in any type of outside programming, podcast format, none of no, that? No, none of it. Really? None of them would ha- hear anything about that whatsoever. They just didn't want to talk about it. So what happened with this guy in the meeting? Um, any interaction was, later in life with him? They're a little, not in person. <laughs> <laughs> not in person. Hey, meet no, me no at reaction. Herbs in Buckwood. I'll be yeah. down there. I'll be down there. I'll be down there. What did you listen there. to when you were a kid? Who'd I listen to on the radio? Yep. Uh, a lot of Rob Sherwood, mm-hmm. no doubt about that. Uh, True Don Blue, mostly KWB, I guess. But right. then I worked at WDGY in right. 1975. So there were a lot of people over there, Jimmy Reed and all those people over there. But yeah, pretty much I grew up with, with the Rob Sherwoods and True Don Blues of the world. Well, what cool, what, fun. What, what enticed you about it? What did you like about it? I said, these people are BSing for a living. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're not, this is not work. Right. I do that standing on a street corner on Plymouth Avenue and Bryant, you know, what I do already. And it, it, that really is true, by the way. What I do on the air is what I've always done. Mm-hmm. And I try to tell people this is not a radio show in any way. And this is back when I started radio. I said, this is not a radio show. This is a conversation. Mm-hmm. And most people just don't understand that. You guys understand it because that's what you've been doing forever, right? Oh, you- I remember the first time I heard your morning show. It was the second time around, and uh, I was on my way to work. I was already enrolled in Brown Institute, and then, but I hadn't started yet. And you came on the air and called Hayne. God, I love Dan. He was such a sweetheart, a man. great guy. Yep. And I could hear you paging through the newspaper. I could hear the sound yeah. of the pages turning. Yep. And it, it was that moment when I decided I don't want to be Wally Walker. I want to do a morning show. I oh, want to yeah. talk. I want to do re, you know a real show. I don't want to just announce Led Led Zeppelin and mm-hmm. Leonard Skinner. You know, mm-hmm. or any yeah. of the guys you grew up with. Do you miss them? Boone and Erickson, Steve Cannon. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Cannon. I that got was, to know that was well. uh, quite an outfit for a while. You're absolutely right. <laughs> I should throw that part in there because I did listen to Boone and Erickson. I listened to Cannon. I listened to. Uh, the whole station, basically. Mm-hmm. Oh God, the fun you used to have with them. Oh my God, that was fun. Well, some of them didn't think it was all that much fun. <laughs> you know, it was yeah, I mean, it got to the point where where I used to go to dinner with Cannon once in a while, and then it got to the point where where he just didn't want to do that anymore because his ratings were dropping and mine were going up, and it's like I'm not competing with you. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's Professionals, a it's, just, it's just a deal. Yeah, right. So um, 
it was that, that was a tough tough road to hoe there for a while, and I just it's been really interesting because once again I I am not real good at at ass kissing or being nice to be if I'm being nice to you I'm sincere because I am not going to be nice to someone just to try to suck up it's just not going to happen oh you're describing me to the T <laughs> yeah I, I know that. everyone I know that Rook I know you that. don't even know if I like you Tom I'm still kissing <laughs> your and ass. now the show is the Tom Bernard morning show podcast yes. only strictly podcast that's correct yeah, yeah. who's and, with you on that show uh, about everybody from KQRS you rotate in yeah they, I brought everybody in except for uh uh, Mike Evans and he's retiring at the end of the year, so he didn't come. Uh, but everybody, everybody else came. I had a couple of people. Kristen Burt from Los Angeles. It's literally kind of the old KQ morning show, but mm-hmm. but uh, a couple of additions there. You know, Sansevier's on there. We got Gelfand. I should bring Gelfand into this show so he can start talking politics. He go, would you please shut up? <laughs> <laughs> he's got to be about please. 90 now, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, <he's, laughs> that's exactly how, right. How is it that everything Mike says is funny? I mean, my oh, God, yeah. he no, is the right. funniest man I have ever heard. He he's is. got a punchline always, always ready, always available. Uh, one of my favorite Mike Gelfand stories, the first year he's out there, right? First year he's on the show, he's in the... Kind of like the di- the lunchroom, I guess, of the old building. And he's sitting there, and he's got both his hands over his face like this. <laughs> and he's leaning his face. He's like facing the t- desktop with his hands over his eyes. And I said, Mike, what's wrong? Yeah. And he goes, well, I've got a huge problem. <laughs> My wife and I only have one thing in common. We both hate me. <laughs> I said, this guy I can work with. Yep. I can work with this fellow. Yep. He's, he's never That's had a, a job, has he? Oh, God. A real no, job. Well, he's a, yeah, like you and Royce. He's yeah. got that newspaper deal. How's your garage door working? My well, garage door's working great, actually. Well, this is the last day you could take advantage of getting your garage door checked for free. I could do that. By, <laughs> by Precision Garage Door Twin Cities. Ladies and gentlemen, Precision Garage Door Twin Cities with Joe Suchere. I don't need those do you know how much? Do, do you know how much <laughs> outfits charge to get that? For right? They better snip at that right well, away. Well, it's a 25-point inspection. Some of my Coca-Cola. There we go. <laughs> Are you an actor, or is this really good Coca-Cola? <laughs>